So we'll go up here to the variables real quick and let me talk about them. <clears throat> so first we want to know if they clicked one time or a second time. So if they didn't click the first time yet, then this will be equal to false. Otherwise, it'll be equal to true. That's what this variable is for, trying to tell when they clicked. Um, this variable right here is to keep the previous index of a, cl of a clicked button. Now, the reason we're doing that is because when you click, you will know the index at that point in time. But how will you know the index of a previous click? So we need to copy that down. So we'll be copying it into this variable, that index number. And then we have the A string choices. Um, the first choice will be the first tag that was clicked. The second choice will be the second tag. So then we'll compare them together. If Rudolph equals Rudolph, then hey, they match. So basically, we're going to tell those positions um, to equal true. So maybe 1 and 2 are equal to true now. So we can also end the game by checking all the positions, see if they equal true. That means they're all visible. they all been matched. Um, also, basically, so we know which ones haven't matched. Um, but we don't, we don't need to use that at this point in time. So to get the point straight, this is only used to end the game and to check and to check which ones have matched so we don't reset them back to um, not being clicked or excuse me, not being matched. So go down here, let the yawn, getting tired these days. So okay, we check the first um, time we clicked, if it's first time, and then the first choice by string is equal to the image index dot tag, and the keep the index, so we can remember which two buttons were clicked. Otherwise, um, it's going to be the second choice is going to be equal to the uh, new tag from whatever index we clicked. And then we're going to say it's not the first choice anymore. So we have true and false for that. Um, then we take the, we got to find out, we got to get the image showing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the button and we're going to set it equal to false and we're going to make the image equal to true. Okay, so we set the first very very first variables we needed to know. First off, we needed to make sure that we could compare two variables, if it's root off and if it's root off. So right here, this could be root off because it was a previous index tag. Could be Santa, could be anything. And this was the other click. So we're comparing them. If they, oh, excuse me. Above this is just saying, is this the second time we clicked? If it is, then we need to go through this message box, the, the player. So if Rudolph equals Rudolph, then set those positions. The previous one, which we don't know, so that's why we kept it stored in a variable. See, it's stored in a variable. Plus the new one we do know right now, the index that they did click. We set them both equal to true, so those positions could be 1 and 8. So now that they're true, um, we know they will always, that means that they've always been picked and they matched. At the same time we need to say matched, and if not, we need to say they're not matched. Um, then we need to undo choices. Undo choices comes down here, and all it does is it checks one through eight of the buttons. If a button is not visible, then it also checks if the position is supposed to be not visible. If the button is not visible, and the position is not visible, then the button needs to be visible again because they didn't match. Um, and the picture uh, needs to not be visible. So the button is going back on top of the picture if they didn't match. So we come up here, and that's after the undo choices. So then we're going to have, we're going to try to figure out if the game ends. So if all p positions are visible, exit program. So I wrote a function. If all positions visible equals true, then that means there's no other thing to click. So message box, game done, closing program, and end. Now come down here, here's the function. I declared another integer for a cycle from 1 to 8. If any of the positions um, are equal to false, that means that there's one that has not matched yet. 
then all positions visible equals false because that means they're not all visible yet nobody has won the game yet so or excuse me the one player that's playing so exit the function otherwise if it goes through all of them that must mean they're all true so when it gets to the end here we still need to return the function so all positions visible equals true then the game would end go down here oh, this isn't supposed to be here that got there because I accidentally clicked earlier okay and then we have the form unload just to save memory set the form name form memory game equal nothing okay so we're gonna go ahead and run this game <coughs> still got stuff in my throat go ahead and push play run That takes a little time to load, basically because I'm running this recording software at the same time. So now the images are chosen, ran the random numbers were chosen, and they're all set in the images. So basically, now we just start playing. I'll click this one. Oh, it's a Christmas tree. Now i got to find Christmas tree somewhere. Um, let's try over here. They do not match. Okay. And then they go back. All right, so I'll try again. Rudolph, hmm, and it's a gifts, and they do not match. So we'll try over here. Santa, wasn't Santa over here? I think. Yes, he was. He matched. Now see, they stayed this time. Christmas tree, Christmas tree, they matched. Rudolph, Rudolph, they matched, and gifts and gifts, they matched. The closing game. Now, if we run it again, they'll be in different spots. It's doing random numbers. Again, it takes a little time to load. All right, so see, I got Santa there. Rudolph's over there now. Christmas tree is over there. Santa, Santa matched. Rudolph, Rudolph. Gifts, gifts, and Christmas tree and Christmas tree. So it works. Now, if you're the person that asked the question and you got this down, um, you can show your teacher and he'll be amazed. <laughs> now, it's really not me that makes you understand this. You have to understand it yourself. I did write it. I'll take credit for writing it, I guess. <laughs> I don't really care. But um, I'm still shocked about the teacher not knowing how to do something like this if they're really a programming teacher. But anyways... Uh, so it's pretty cool looking, and we're going to be doing the windsock control pretty soon. Um, I look forward to it because that's going to make me happy and you guys happy. Make some LAN games, make some chat rooms, um, and then you can make some memory games like this on your program or whatever, and you can play with other people. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm still laughing about the teacher whole thing. Anyways, this is done. It took me an hour and 30 minutes to write the code on this. I have not found any bugs. I've been playing with it. Just can't find any. I think it's too simple. Um, I believe it's about 200 lines of code. So, yeah, I'm a genius sometimes. You know, well, maybe for this part. But anyways, thanks for watching this video. Um, we'll be moving on again. And I hope this video answers the questions to the um, previous person that messaged me in my inbox. Uh, keep sending me comments, questions, whatever. I'll keep making videos. Until next time.